You've been better than good to me. Say so many doors and so many ways, so many times. You've been better than good to me. So many doors, so many ways, so many times. You've been better than good to me. 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 Oh, so many doors. So many ways. So many times. You've been better than good to me. So many. Been better than good to me. Been better than good to me. Better than good to me. Been better than good to me. You've 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 been better than good to me. When I mess up and fail to God. When I love You've been better than good to me, Jesus. Time and time again, I'm begging God. Every mess up in this head, God. You've been better than good to me, Jesus. You've been better than good to me, Jesus. You've been better than good. You've been better than good. You've been better than good to me, Jesus. about you but God is amazing hallelujah and an incredible God deserve incredible praise hallelujah I said an incredible God deserve incredible praise hallelujah an incredible God deserve incredible praise hallelujah an incredible God deserve incredible praise hallelujah if he didn't do nothing for you you sit there in your seat hallelujah but if God's been good to you Good to you. An incredible God. 
deserve incredible praise. An incredible God 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 deserve incredible praise. He deserves incredible praise. Incredible praise. Incredible praise. It don't matter what you're going through. It don't matter what you've been through. He is an incredible God. He deserves all your praise. I said an incredible praise. 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 Hey Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand, praise, and tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, Lord. Amen. Our morning scripture will be coming from Psalms Division 150. Hallelujah. And the word of the Lord reads, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbre and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Now I need everybody to make some noise. Let everything Everything. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody! 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 Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord, everybody! 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 Praise the Lord, everybody!
don't know what you come to do. I 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 don't know what you come to do. Praise him. 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 He's gracious. He's gracious. He's gracious. He's gracious. He's loving God. He's a loving God. He's a loving God. He's a loving God. Praise Him. 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 What's his name? What's his name? Call his name. Call his name. Call his name. Call his name. Jesus. 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus,
together come on give you put your hands together what's the highest praise i said what's the highest praise what's the highest praise hallelujah well you ought to give god a shout hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, if Jesus did something for you this week, you ought to give God a praise really quickly. Hallelujah, you better open up your mouth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, hallelujah. Let's get the atmosphere right. Let's get the atmosphere right. Come on, let's get the atmosphere right. Come on, let's get the atmosphere right. Hallelujah, all that he's done for you. Hallelujah. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has brought me through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I know a lot of you are tired and a lot of you going through. Hallelujah. But you got to give God a praise. Hallelujah. If you want your breakthrough, hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I did open up your mouth and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We certainly give our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We certainly glad. Hallelujah. That He let us see another day. Amen. Amen. We thank God for our overseer, overseer, our general overseer, Apostle C.A. Coward. Hallelujah. Let's give Him a hand clap of praise. Our board of bishops, Bishop Ivor J. McLeod, our presiding bishop, amen, Bishop Jonathan Brookshire, amen, amen, Bishop Adrian Shaw. We thank God for the overseer, district overseer of the New North District, amen, uh, overseer Kevin Williams, amen. We thank God for everybody in their respectful places. We thank God for all the uh, district elders. We thank God, amen, for everybody in their respectful places, all the pastors, amen, all the first ladies, Amen. We certainly thank God for what he's doing. Amen. Amen. Just lift your hands to God. Hallelujah. Come on. Just lift your hands to God. Just lift your hands to him. Lord, we thank you right now, God. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands. Just call on him. Amen. Just call on him. We about to get the choir up, but I just feel it. Just, just thank God. All this good word and good preaching that we've been getting. Amen. We ought to just thank him. We just thank him. Just thank him. Just get two seconds to praise him. Just get two seconds just to worship him. Just give him two seconds out of your time right now. Come on. I know we church. I know we do service after service. But just give God something real quick. Just give him something out of your heart. Just give him something out of your heart right now. Come on. Just give it to him. Give it to him. Come on. Let's set the atmosphere. Let's set the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to have the choir. Amen. We're going to have the choir give us a selection. Amen. Let's give them a hand clap of praise as they come.
Come on, grab your hands. How many of you know the blood still works? The blood still works. 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 The blood, 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 the blood. Hallelujah, you ought to grab somebody next to you. Hallelujah, and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but the blood still works. Because it was shed for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If the blood saves you, hallelujah, you ought to give God a praise right now. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I love the blood. Hallelujah. Because I know he said it for me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. But see, what I think about the blood is, hallelujah, there's a name that's attached to the blood. And if you don't know the name that's attached to the blood, I do to call on the name right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We're going to ask Minister Lewis to come and give us our announcements. Amen. Amen. Let's give a hand clap of praise as he comes. He's not here. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Still praise him. Come on. Come on. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord. See, there's something that we do in Jessup, and I say it's the Jessup anthem. Amen. Hallelujah. We say, bless that wonderful name. Hallelujah. Bless that wonderful name. Say, bless that wonderful name. Oh. Say, bless that wonderful name. Oh. Say, bless that wonderful name. Oh. Come on and bless God if you know that there's power in his name. Amen. We do honor the Lord. We thank God for him allowing us to be here. Very quickly, just for just a few announcements. If you have received a letter from me,
If you have received a letter from me on today, um, Apostle wants to meet with you at 2 o'clock p.m. at the Cup of Eden. At 2 o'clock p.m. at the Cup of Eden. So if you receive one of these envelopes from me, please be sure this is a very, very important meeting that you do not want to be absent at. We do want to meet Apostle at the Cup of Eden at 2 p.m. The Cup of Eden is located right next to Chef Wendell's catering uh, Jamaican kitchen there, which is Elder Spence's restaurant. So please make sure you are in, t in attendance if you have received that letter from me. Also, today is our National Fellowship Day. <laughs> Fellowshipping is good. The entire fellowship will begin today at 3 o'clock p.m., at 3 o'clock p.m., and it's going to be held at the property uh, directly in front of Jewett Academy. Uh, we're getting the address for everybody. Once we get the actual address, we will release that. Everything begins at 3 o'clock. From 3 until 5 p.m., it's going to be the Christ Kingdom Kids and ATM Takeover. So all of our young people... We want you to come on out. Parents, please, please make sure your children are there so that they can enjoy this time. We have an awesome program lined up for our Kingdom Kids and our ATMs. And this is an opportunity to show the city of Winter Haven as well as the world what Bible Way has within itself. Also from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. is the display of holiness. Come on and clap your hands for holiness. And that's going to be hosted by Sister Kirsten Floyd. So we want to make sure that we are out there for that event as well. And then at 7 p.m. is the gospel concert. So for everyone that likes to sing, praise God in any type of way, we want to come on out uh, to be a part of this gospel concert. I'm not for sure who they have on program, but we want to come on out and just celebrate the Lord together with the community of Winter Haven. And our speaker for this event will be all the way from Savannah, Georgia, Elder Sean Floyd. So if you've never had church on the street today, we're going to have church on the streets. So please make sure you are in attendance. The address to the fellowship, go ahead and grab your pen, your paper, your phones, your tablets, your computers, whatever you got to use to write this down. I'm going to go ahead and give the address out to everyone. The address is 702 MLK. Boulevard. Not hard to remember. 702 MLK Boulevard. And it's going to be right here in Winter Haven. And let's keep in mind our goal for this is souls. We want to evangelize. We want to witness. We want to get these souls in. Apostle is encouraging all saints, all saints, to please wear National General Assembly paraphernalia. All of your shirts, your hats, the pins, anything that they have in the registration store, we want to wear that to this great event. So please be sure to stop by the registration store to pick up your shirts, your hoodies, your hats, whatever it is that you want to wear at that event. Also, the parade is in the morning, so we don't want to forget about that. I believe lineup is at 7.30 p.m. at Hobbs Road. So if you're going to be in the parade, please make sure you are timely at Hobbs Road at 7.30 p.m. For more information about that, you can most definitely see First Lady Cower. Um, let's continue to keep all of these in mind. If you have any questions, feel free to see myself, and I'll go ahead and answer any questions you have. If something is not clear, please find me so I can make sure that you all have all the information that you need to know. We're still making apostolic great, right? Let's celebrate Jesus. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. We're going to have the choir to give us another selection. Amen. Let's give them a hand clap of praise as they come. Amen. But before they come, I um, want to definitely give honor and praise to my pastor, Pastor Eli Porter. Amen. Amen. Who's going to be our speaker. Amen. This morning. Amen. I thank God for this man of God um, and all the things that he's ever done for me and the church. Amen. One of the things that I can just say really quickly um, that overseer said about him is that he's not only 
a person that is getting something, but he's coming to bring something. Amen. Amen. So if you can just receive him, amen. Let's stand to our feet really quickly just to receive him. Amen. And then we'll have a selection from the choir. Amen. And then the next voice that you will hear will be his. Amen. Let's give him a head. Come on. Let's stand to our feet to honor the man of God. Amen. That's going to give us the word. Amen. This morning. Amen.
Hallelujah. Put your hands together and give God a praise. Come on, if you got an excellent praise, you ought to show forth that excellent praise. Come on. Open up your mouth and give God praises. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands if you really love Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Amen. To minister. And our theme being making apostolic great again. Amen. Anybody want to make the devil mad, just make apostolic great again. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad. Anybody glad and any rejoices in here today? Come on, anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? Just one more time. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. We honor, we praise him. You know, I think praise is in fact an action. Amen. I know we say praise the Lord. You repeat it back. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No, you praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. That's to show forth some actions. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, my little brother, he liked to say this, and I, I admire him for choosing these words. He says, if you love the devil, sit down and shut your mouth. All right, I thought I was in the apostolic church. I thought this was Church of God, the Bible way. Amen. Hallelujah. We honor him. You need to make your praise great again. All right. Make your worship great again. Make your hallelujah great again. Make your thank you, Jesus, great again. Somebody shout glory. I need to grab hold of somebody's hand and say, neighbor, I need to make my praise again. You might need to give me a few room and give me a few steps to the left while I make my praise again. Somebody shout hallelujah. All right, let me, let me move forward. And I was talking to the crazy church here. Hallelujah. Amen. We honor, glory, we honor the spirit of our Lord Jesus. <laughs> Sound like y'all catching on. Amen. We thank God for being in the truth. We appreciate his spirit. I ain't going to hold you. If you want to praise him, go ahead. Where you praise at? You might as well grab somebody's hand and just go ahead and praise them real quick. Clap your hands to give our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, a hand praise. Amen. We honor and appreciate him. Without him, we're nothing. Without him, we don't have life. We don't have existence. We don't have being. Amen. The word declares that it's in him that we live, we move, and have our being. We appreciate God. Amen. For the life that he breathed inside of us. Amen. And made us, in fact, a living soul. We appreciate the Lord. Amen. We thank God for our general overseer, my pastor, my father, Apostle C.A. Coward. Amen. We appreciate him. 
Thank God for the presiding bishop, Bishop Ira J. McLeod, the board of bishops, Bishop Adrian Saul, God bless you, Bishop Brookshire, God bless you. Thank God for our district overseer of our new North District, amen, overseer Kevin Williams. Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you, our district elder that's here today as well, district elder Andrew Johnson, all of the pastors, the elders, deacons, stewards, trustees, amen. To all of the first ladies, God bless you. We appreciate you. Thank God for my praying mother, amen. Love you in Jesus' name. Amen. I came to minister what the Lord has given me today. Hallelujah. And the topic is, or the theme is making apostolic great again. And the Lord gave me a message. I'm not with the hybrid. Apostolic is who I am. It, it'll register just in a second. I'm not with the hybrid. You to catch up with that. I'm not with the hybrid. You know, when they first start talking about hybrids, it talks about different animals mixing together. When you mix breed something, it becomes a hybrid. Amen. And if we're going to make apostolic great again, we can't be mixed. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Okay. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to go to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 35, amen. I realize in this hour that we do live in an hour of, of compromise. Amen. Uh, where churches are in fact compromising. Amen. They believe that if you, you know, dim the lights in the church, play music like the world got it, and kind of mix, breed it, that we could win the young people. I'm going to be honest with you. When I first came to the Lord, I was young. But we didn't believe in, amen, Christian rap or Christian R&B, Christian slow jam. We didn't. I know I won't get too much help, but when you mix the culture of the world in the church, it becomes a compromise. And when the angels in the book of Genesis, they came down and they saw, amen, these women, and they started mixed breeding, and they created a hybrid. Amen. Just as churches now, you got the hybrid churches. It's the mixed culture church. It, and they done left it from God's church. Now they call it mega church. You know how it was, the giants back. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. You know how the giants was back in those days. They, you know, the, the mega church. It's not even the Lord's church anymore. It's the mega church because they got the dim lights. And the, the praise team could sing whatever they want to say. They don't have to say Jesus. Y'all ain't. I thought I had the right church. I'm, don't have to say Jesus anymore. There's no more gospel music. Amen. I seen a church, man, and all the lights was out. It just had stage lights on. If I'm not mistaken, the Bible says that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. And in this hour, uh, when you look at churches now, they, their deeds, it don't have anything to do with the truth. Not preaching Jesus anymore. Preaching how to get money, how to get rich, how to stay fly. We don't have to preach how to get rich. We don't have to preach how to get fly. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, he said, seek ye first. I just need 10 Bible readers. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. I don't have to preach a compromising message, amen, for people to be saved. We don't have to look like the world, act like the world, dress like the world for the young people to come in. Amen. Holiness is right for the old and the young. I wish this was the right message. We don't need the hybrid church. We don't need the mixture of the, because what happens is Babylon come in the church. And we don't need the Babylonian system inside of God's house. 
It's a holy sanctuary with the holy people without compromise. And when I look all over the world today and I saw some foolishness with Paula White, she's chanting and all type of stuff, clothes coming off. What happened to the church? She had no business up there anyway, but what happened to God's church? And we in this hour, we have to make apostolic great again, but it starts with everybody. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And young people, I want to say this, it don't matter how old or young you are, you still can be apostolic. And see, I like the phrase apostolic to the bone. Because you can change your clothes. You can change your apparel. But when it comes down to the bone, and, and, and some people say, I'm apostolic to the marrow. Lord, have mercy. I wish I had the right church with me. And so we need to get the apostolic culture back. Oh, Y'all ain't saying nothing. We done tiptoe into the Catholicism, uh, uh, the Catholic church. Why in the world are the, the pastors and the elders walking in the church with their head covered and they're preaching? The Bible tells we ain't supposed, y'all ain't saying nothing. So what happened is now we have this mixed church to where we have some of the world system coming into the church. I mean, the big hats and I mean, every they got the big crosses around their neck. Like, oh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. They want to look, act, and sound like the world. We don't even have preachers no more. We got motivational speakers. And let me tell you this, I'm going to get to the scriptures, but it's so bad to where the motivational speakers, all of them becoming preachers because all they see is the preachers being motivational speakers. Can I say that again? It's a guy, I think his name is Eric. He's a good motivational speaker, but now he's trying to transition into a pastoral role because all he sees is pastors. They're not preaching anymore. They're just being motivational speakers. You don't have nobody talking about sin no more. Nobody talking about baptism in Jesus' name no more. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Motivating me to get this nice car, this nice house. What's going to happen when I leave here? Somebody shout hallelujah. I want you to go to the book of Isaiah chapter 35. And I'm scared to talk about the new dances that they have in the church. I'm about the whole ballerina team in the church. Everybody, Lord have mercy. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. We got our own dance. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. All right, let me come yes, back sir. up. Are y'all looking at me like I'm speaking a different? Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 35. Thank you, Jesus. 35 and 8, what does that say? And a highway shall be there. Bible said there's going to be a highway there. Uh-huh. And a way. And, is that it again? And a way. And a way. <laughs> so we got a highway and there is a way. Now, when you talk about making apostolic great again, we're not talking about this broad highway. We're talking about a way and a is in fact singular. So there's only one way. Read that again, uh-huh. And a highway shall be there. He said, there's going to be a highway there. Uh-huh. And a way. And a way. And it shall be called. And it shall be called. The way of holiness. The way of what? Holiness. holiness. So there is a way that the church should operate in. Yes. And can I be honest with you? A lot of the churches have gotten off the way. Yes, sir. And can I be a little further honest with you? Have you ever seen a way, way, one-way street? Yes, sir. If you go down that one way incorrectly... You gonna tear some stuff up, and, and 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 I really feel like a lot of saints are tearing stuff up in their mind because they're going the wrong direction down the one. Y'all ain't saying. See, 
what happens is when you come contrary to the doctrine that we've learned, you go on the wrong way, on the one way. Yo, don't you, Lord have mercy, don't you know you can be on the one way going the wrong way? Lord, I wish I had the right church with me. You know what that means? That means you're right there in the church hearing the doctrine and you still do whatever you want to do. All right. Yes, sir. I'm glad I'm preaching now. I ain't got to preach yes, now. Bible said that there's a highway and there's a way and the way is called holiness and what's happening is we're getting away from the way we need to get back on, make sure we're going the right way now don't just get on it but make sure you're going in the direction of the one way and then they mess around on the one way they got an arrow on the sign y'all ain't saying nothing <laughs> let me give you this Go down to the Proverbs chapter 16. Somebody shout hallelujah. We want to make sure that we're going the right way on the one way. Proverbs 16 and 25. There is a way. There is a way. That seemed right. Whoa, wait a minute. It seemed. It seemed right just to say, I believe and I'm going to be saved. That seemed right. It seemed, y'all ain't saying nothing. It seemed right when we say, I, I ain't gonna speak in no tongue. I gotta, that seemed right. The Bible says, what did I say, huh? There is a way that seemeth right uh -huh. unto a man. Unto a man, it seemed like it's the right direction. Uh huh. But the end thereof. But the end, you keep on going down what it seemed to be right. See, when you use seem, you gotta, that, that first three letters is C. And when we in this apostolic truth, we can't walk by what we see. Because there's going to be some things in this scripture that we can't just look at. And the apostle's going to say, and sometimes, well, I, I don't understand what the apostle is saying because of what my eyes are seeing. Wow. Wow. Come on. This is why this is a faith journey. This is a, listen, when, 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 when we're in this truth, everything is about what you cannot see but what you hear. This is why faith don't come by what you see. Y'all ain't talking to me. Faith come by what you what? Here. Read that one more time. There is a way. There is a way. That seemeth right unto a man. Uh -huh. But the end thereof. But the end thereof. Are the ways of death. Now you cannot create a church after the death of Jesus and say hallelujah that that's God's church. Wow. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Come on, sir. You know, the Catholic Church, when they started up their stuff, uh, 33 AD, and, you know, the Protestant, they came out of them. The Baptists came out of them. And, you know, and it, this new church is the non-denominational church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Non-denominational. No, that, not, that denomination word, that, that thing's so close to demon, I don't even like to say it. Say, what denomination? Hey, listen, I ain't got no demons. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I, what you mean, what denomination? I don't know. I ain't got no. The Bible don't even mention a denomination. It talks about a faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And see, this non-denominational spirit done took over the church. They all their church. Hey, everybody inside, they said, well, we're going to put our doctrinal differences to the side. And, you, you know, you can come this, come as you, the Bible say, come as you are, which there's no scripture in there that say that. But they say the Bible say, come as you are, and you can do. And they started 1982. How you come down here now? The Bible says now, when, when he looked at Peter, he said, upon this rock, I'm going to do what? Build my, that wasn't in the 1900s. So how do we start a church after, Lord have mercy, y'all ain't saying nothing. So when we make an apostolic great again, we got to go back to the scripture. We got we to take it back to the old way. God didn't want us to make, he, when, even when he told, uh, 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 talked to Moses, he said, I want you to pattern this. I want you to make this thing a life. So there should, in our generation, it should be nothing new for what they were doing then. Y'all yes, ain't saying nothing. Now there's just so much new stuff out there. People, I mean, you, it, it, it's just so many new doctrinal uh, 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 things and theories. It's like, man, where are they getting this stuff from? 
You're not going to get no new download from God if it's outside of the scriptures. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say, man, where, where they getting all these new doctrines and they got new different books? We was down there at YY's and the Latter-day Saints came over there, man. They messed up when they got over there with us. They was, they were so scared and they, they had to go there. And they, they came over there bold until we started talking about the oneness of God and they started trembling. Amen. We got, we got to take it back. We don't need to be hybrid. We don't need to have the world and the Lord's church mixed together. They said, well, it looked like it's producing growth. Don't worry about, see, see, it ain't, it, God ain't worried about no numbers. All right, let me give you a scripture. Go down to Matthew chapter 7. Let me show you this. I wish I could grab my ear and hoop this morning, but the Lord is sending me a different way. Yes, sir. Watch this. Matthew chapter 7. I believe that's 13. Uh, what does that say? Enter ye and at the straight gate. Enter ye at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. For wide is the gate. And broad is the way. And broad is the way. That leadeth to destruction. Wait a minute. Don't that sound like what Isaiah said? That highway is that Broadway. On the broad, you know, when you go down there to New York, they got something called the Broadway. Can I tell you what they do down there? They do what they want to do. Y'all ain't saying nothing. On Broadway, they do whatever they want to do. Listen, they were folk down there had nothing on. The Broadway. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Can I be honest? Y'all don't get mad at me. You won't be saved on the Broadway. See, what happens is when you got the Broadway, it's too much space to do what you want to do. Come here, son. A few of my sons. Come here, come here. Come here, some of your brothers. Tavon, Davon, y'all come here. Come here, Mike. Let me show y'all this. Come here, Mike. Both of y'all mics. Come on. Now, when you got a Broadway, all right, y'all stand right there. All right, you come on this side. Let me get a couple more brothers. All right. I want y'all to stand far apart. Right, right, right. All right. So now, a little, little bit more space. All right, there you go. All right, this is the Broadway. I can do whatever I want, bounce around, in the house, skip around, do whatever I want, right? But then we will make the way straight and tight. Bring it in a little bit. Now, when I'm going through the way, when it's a little closer, I got to make adjustments. I can't do what I want to do. When I'm trying to make it through here, I got to make adjustments with my body. I got to make adjustments with my mind. I got to make adjustments with my heart so I can make it to the other side. And see, the problem is you too cute to make adjustments. You too pretty. Lord, have mercy. I wish I had the right church. See, you was used to doing whatever you wanted to do at the Baptist church. You was used to doing whatever you wanted to do at the non-denominational church. But then the Bible says it's a straight and narrow way. So you got to make some adjustments. Lord, have mercy. You can't say what you want to say to the man of God. You can't talk to people how you want. You got to make some adjustments. Oh, somebody ought to shout Hallelujah. Oh, put your hands together and give God a praise. Oh, grab somebody by the hand and say, neighbor, I got to go down the straight and narrow. The church has lost structure and order. That's why you're doing whatever you want to do. That thing get tight. You got to maneuver. If I don't like her, I got to speak to her now. Lord, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I... I, didn't, I wasn't obedient to my father, but now I got to be obedient to the man of God. It's, it's, it's difficult. It's tight. It's a squeeze. You can't do what you want to do. Make apostolic great again. It feel better when it's open. You start narrowing that thing down. See, what happens is, I don't know if you ever seen somebody squeezing through something. Sometimes you get cut when you're squeezing through. You might get a scrape. You might get a wound, but, but you're coming through it. Ever seen a tight wall, somebody squeezing through it? Hallelujah, by the time they get on the other side, they got scars all over themselves. 
Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. See, see, just like Jesus got scarred, when you make adjustments to be saved, you start getting scarred. The people you used to hang around with, you can't hang around them no more. Oh, Lord, I'm about to. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. See, a lot of times now, you know, in this new age church, you, you can do whatever you want to do. Hang around whoever you want to hang around with. Don't you know people can cause you to backslide? Oh, y'all ain't say, oh, no, I'm saved. Listen, I'm too saved. I ain't no, I, you know, I know I used to be a drunk, but I can go down there to that bar. Go down there if you want to. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Sometimes when you make adjustments in your life, you got to adjust your friends and your associates. Oh, Lord, let me come down here because I don't think y'all, can y'all hear me? You got to make adjustments to your surroundings. If you apostolic, you need to have an apostolic best friend. Oh, Lord, it just got real tough. Okay, yeah, since y'all don't want to, I, I got Bible to back it. But listen, if you got friends, your friends should be in the church. Well, that's my best friend of 15 years. Well, baby, if she ain't saying, you got some, some strings you got to cut loose. You know, listen, the Bible says lay aside every and the, see, see, it's not just sin that can hold you back, but the weight. And don't you know that home girl that you used to have and that your best friend, your homeboy, that's used to, that could be a weight from keeping you from where you need to be. Because that's your best friend. See, what happens is, because that's your best friend, you, you, you know, you see they, they status on Facebook and all that stuff, and now you think they live living a better life than you. Can I tell y'all something? I told the saints this. Facebook be lying. Listen, y'all ain't saying that. I, I have to tell something. I said, listen, don't get caught up looking at your old friends, and man, they look like they're having a great, they ain't going to put on there that they just lost their job. They ain't going to put on there that they bank account on in the negative. They ain't going to say nothing. To, they just going to put up the good stuff. The good life. And you sitting there, man, ever since, ever since I've been at style, it seems like I can't get no money. When you was in the world, you was a poor money man. Don't be blame the church. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Ever, ever since I came to the church, it seemed like I can't get a job. You want to get a job then? Update your resume. Go to the class. Learn how to do something different. Stop blaming it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Blaming the church. You know, people do stuff like they blame the church for everything. I got a headache. Oh, well, you know, we was in the church last night, and it sounded like the music was real high. It was at that altar all night. I, I'm tired. I got a headache. It's real quiet. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So when we're going down this straight and narrow path, you got to make adjustments. And can I tell you something? Everybody can't go where you're going anyway. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Let me tell you something about a mountain. And I was so astounded when I went to Arizona and I looked at the Grand Canyon. And even out there, how big those mountains are, it's only a limited amount of people that could stand on different parts because of the altitude. And th when people, listen, let me tell you something. When things go up, spaces get narrow. I'm going to let that sit and sink for just a second. Because where God is taking you, everybody can't go. Because you're apostate. Listen, oh Lord, have mercy. Even Jesus just took a few people on up. Okay, somebody said, everybody can't go where I'm going. Go down to the first Corinthians chapter 6. Let me give you this because somebody looking at me talking about their best friend ain't saved and they, they want to still. Let me show you what the Bible say there. I know it's, I know it's in the book. All right. Second Corinthians chapter 6. I believe that's 14. What does that say? 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 14. Amen. Amen. Be ye not unequally yoked. Be ye not unequally yoked. 
Together with unbelievers. Together with what? Unbelievers. Unbelievers. And I know people like to, you know, demise that or bring it to a small category and say that's just marriage. No, that's your friends too. And if we're going to make apostolic great again, I need an apostolic. I'm, I'm thankful my best friend apostolic. Come on, come on, sir. Come on. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Come on, sir. You need to have some friends that are apostolic so you can, see, you know, see, see what happens is if you got a friend that's out there in the world and you're trying to make apostolic great again, if you have a bad day or something go wrong and you tell your best friend that something's going wrong, they're going to start blaming the church. Or you might well come out here and get a little drink with me because that's what, I, that's what happens when I, get, when I have problems. I go out there and get a little shot of tequila and I'm all right. He starts thinking, well, yeah, you know what? When I was out there before, it did, it did seem like it took my problems away. And you're back in pastor office, pastor, I, uh, <laughs> I messed up again because I didn't change my association. That's a part of making the apostolic great. That's a part of not being hybrid because if you're connected with somebody else that's an unbeliever, y'all ain't saying nothing. What you produce can't be that singular, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. So you can produce a hybrid. Amen. And you don't want a hybrid nature. Can I be honest with you? You've got a hybrid nature that's a demon. I must have said the wrong thing. If you got hybrid nature, you know they call it different personalities. If you got split personalities, we need to go to the prayer room, the war room, the altar, and we got to get that thing out of there. Let me tell you something. When you're in that hybrid environment, your ears and your eyes are portals. So the stuff you surround yourself with and what you listen to, and that's why you can't listen to everybody. You can't listen to T.D. Jakes. Oh, Lord. I'm about to get in trouble here. You can't listen to Geno Jennings. I thought Geno was apostolic. Yeah, but he read out of lost books. The whole church got quiet. This happens out of church. Am I talking right? Can't listen to Noel Jones. I know these big time preachers. You can't. And, and, and listen. I'm about to get. No, I ain't going to say that. You got to be careful with you. You can't listen to all these false prophets making all these prophecies online and saying false stuff. You can't, you can't listen to everybody. Because that stuff will get in your spirit and you'll become hybrid by nature. You ever heard of naughty by nature? Don't act like y'all been saved your whole life. You know what I'm talking about. Naughty by nature, that means that, you know, they're conducive to that environment. So when you listen to any and everything, what happens is you become a hybrid by nature. Lord, have mercy. So this is why, hallelujah, I'm going to say it again because I think a few people, you can't listen to gospel rap. You can't. Give me Romans chapter 12. Let me show you why you can't. You start listening to gospel rap, it's going to put you back in the You that, Listen, listen, when you listen to the gospel rap, you, student, you do the same movement. Oh, Lord. They say, oh, my God, I done dropped it like it's hot, and I didn't even mean to. They, they just said, Jesus, what was that? It's the sound. See, that sound produces spirit. Lord, help us. I was listening. To, it was this guy. I forget the, the band name. But it was a, a gospel singer. He was. And then he started converting. And he started saying, Put the battle to the floor and start saying he he started, started, it started he was saying stuff about the Bible, but it starts sounding like genuine. And the beat, I had to turn the music off. Oh y'all ain't yeah, see I I'm gonna tell the truth. I ain't gonna I ain't y'all can sit here and lie and act like y'all saved, dignified. I'm telling I had to turn it off. 
I was a guy back in the day. I used to like slow jams. That was my thing, the slow jam. I wasn't never a rap. I ain't, I ain't like rap. But it was just that slow, they called me a pretty boy. So I, it was just that slow, soft music that did something to me. And so y'all ain't saying nothing. And so when the music was playing, I, it was, it's on the radio. My arms, I said, hold on, man, what the devil get off me? <laughs> Jay Moss, that's his name, Jay Moss. He, at first he was singing good. And then that next song came on, my arm went, I, well, I felt like I was in the, uh, 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 what's that little group with the red canes? What's their name? Dushimi. What's it called? The Kappa. I thought I was a Kappa. My arms start moving. I said, well, hold on, hold on now. What is, turn that thing off. Because I, listen, it was by nature. And you can sit there, I say like it was. See, I, I, I'm glad that I'm honest. Amen. You know some of y'all, y'all listen to some of them beats that you used to listen to and have you doing some other stuff. I don't agree with this, this lady that used to rap and all this stuff, name like that, but her name was Missy Elliott. And she sung this song that made so much sense. She said, music makes you lose control. And it does. That music will have your mind messed up so you out there listening to that gospel rap and now you're in the car juking. And then by the time you get, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Then you done, you know, now, now you done start changing the station because it sounds the same. And if you're not troubled in your mind when you hear music that's supposed to be gospel, that sound like R&B and rap, and you don't see that there's no difference in between, there's something wrong. If you listen to that thing and say, oh, that, oh, that sounds pretty good. Something's wrong. You say, hold on now. That don't sound like the gospel. That don't sound like holiness. That don't sound like sanctification. That don't sound like purification. That sound, it'll mess you up. You know, music got so much power. Back then, I couldn't even, you know, women, some women and men, some people can't even clean without sound of music. You start cleaning like this, that music get on you, you getting in the creases of things. You yeah? <laughs> got an argument with your, <laughs> y'all ain't saying nothing. Is in the world got an argument with your little boyfriend, you playing every slow jam that talk about breakups. <laughs> y'all ain't talking to me. And you start listening to that thing, it got you all messed up, your mind all, all over the place. Like, it's, like it's, it's, it's healing you or curing you from what you got going on. That music got power now. Y'all look crazy like that if you want. What does Romans say? Romans chapter 12. Uh -huh, one. What does that say? I beseech you therefore, brethren. I'm begging you, brethren. By the mercies of God. Uh -huh. That you present your bodies. I want you to present your bodies. A living sacrifice. This means that every day of my life I have to sacrifice. That, that means that when it comes down to my living, everything is a sacrifice. Friends, music. You know that man that don't mean you no know good sacrifice. Everything that look good. But he just so, he just so, oh, he just, he just make me feel this type of, but you know he ain't no good. I just like the way he walk. He bow-legged and pigeon toe. I, I, he got the big shoulders. I just, it just make me lose control. I just like, sis, calm down. Get yourself together and know that he's no good. You can't even sleep at night you're thinking about that boy. Oh, can I give you, listen, the Bible tell you as a single woman, who need to be on your mind? Oh, Lord. I know it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I don't know if I had that much time to go there or not, but the Bible tell you, 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 you your mind should be on the Lord, doing things of the Lord. 
you in school can't even do two plus two because he, you just can't get the right answer. He said, well, how in the world did I miss that answer? That's easy. That's easy arithmetic. Where that boy on that mind? I don't know why I went that way, but I had to say it. I thought we were supposed to keep our mind stayed on him. Is that what the Bible says? Keep your mind stayed on him and keep it what? Perfect peace? Somebody shout hallelujah. Live in sacrifice, uh-huh. Holy. Acceptable unto God. Uh-huh. Which is your reasonable service. Which is a reasonable service. And be not conformed. And be not what? Conformed. Be not what? Conformed. Conformed. To what? To this word. Now, let me explain this to you. Conforming means to harmonize with. So if my sound or if my music sound like the world's music, that means I'm in harmony with the world. And then he says, love not the world, neither the things that's in the world. Yes, sir. Come on, sir. Make it plain, if you love rap, I'm sorry. Wrap your mind around Jesus. <laughs> Y'all acting like this ain't, now this walk here, you got to sacrifice some stuff. If you love rap, hey, listen, you got to give it up. I don't want to give it up because they say it, 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 it don't leave it, it because it catered to the young people. I'll be honest with you. I get joy when I think that catered to me too. I'm young, but I like that. I like that feeling of that song. I'm not saying that's everybody's song, but I'm just saying, you know, some of the old school songs, I like them. And they got some new stuff out that's, that's congruent with the old, and I still like them. It don't have to have me, you know, feel like I'm, you know, bumping and grinding when I'm listening to gospel. Did, did I say something wrong? <laughs> if that music make you want to do something that you're not supposed to do, that ain't gospel. If it got you saying, hey, that ain't gospel. Oh, I done, got, I done dug in something now, Bishop. Oh, my Lord. What you say, Pastor? Let me say it again. If that beat or that music got you saying, when you say, hey, and you linger, let me show you how. You say, hey. If you're doing that while that song is on, that can't be gospel because gospel ain't going to make you, hey. Oh, Lord. It ain't, it, ain't, it ain't gonna make you get the A like that. It'll get you to say amen, but it ain't gonna have you. Hey! <laughs> that thing, come on, you forget you say. That beat, come on, you forget you say. How you singing? I mean, how you bouncing and joking and, and it's supposed to be singing about God? And the crazy thing is, is that your movement do not change from when you was in the world. Oh, Lord. Can, can, can I, can, if those movements are the same, then that can't be a different sound. Don't you know the Bible talks about motions of sin? It's in the book of Romans. And so you got the same, if you got the same juke you had in the world with this gospel song, it can't be gospel. Got somebody say, I can't, I can't be hybrid. I, I ain't with the mixed co I, 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 I'm with the one. See, if, it, if you believe in one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and if you believe in one marriage, how you can't believe in one sound? Can I ask that question again? Because some of y'all looking at me strange. If you believe in one Lord, you always got your finger up. One, 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 one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one father. One, yeah, you're all the ones, but you forget the one sound. 
Can I tell you something? See, when it talks about spirit, let me give you Ephesians chapter 4. I'm, I got to get out of here. I'm sorry. I'm running, am I running out of time? How much time I got? I, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm in Statesboro. I'm sorry. Go down to Ephesians. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4 and 4. What does that say? There is one body. One body. And one spirit. And one what? Spirit. spirit. See? Lord have mercy. Sound precedes spirit. Yes. So if it's one spirit, it has to be one sound. Oh, Jesus. So that boom, boom, tang, tang, and all that stuff, it, 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 ain't, it ain't dead. That ain't it no more. You done got, see, that's why the Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a what? New creature. All things have, behold, how many things? All things. So if all things become new, guess what? That whole CD collection that you still got that's just lingering in at your house, y'all ain't saying, you know what? Some of y'all got music on your phone that's just sitting there waiting just in case you can use it. I'm talking about apostolic phone. I'm talking about y'all right in here. Somebody in here, get, you still got a little collection of music that's just, it's just sitting there waiting to be used. Wow. Just in case. Just in case the church make me mad or just in case pastor say something I don't want to hear. And I know that this music is soothing. I'm going to walk over here. I, I like to walk around anyway. You got, them, you got that set? Why you still got the music there? Got that just in case music. Just in case something happens. Got that little back, that backup. You got that old record. You know the old record player. Throw that mess away. You got Marvin Gaye and all. Listen, leave that stuff alone. Behold, all things are new. So if all things become new, that means everything that I ever dealt with in my life, everything becomes new. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So my mind has to change. What scripture I got you at, sir? Ephesians 4. Right, go back 4. to Romans chapter 12, and I'm, I'm going to sum it up because I got to get out of here. Romans chapter 12. I didn't even get, get to do all my scriptures like I was supposed to. <laughs> 12 and 2, what did that say? And be not conformed. Be not conformed. To this world. I don't want you to conform to this world. But be ye transformed. This is how I want you to make your transformation. Uh-huh. By the renewing. By the what? Renewing. Why in the world is the I-N-G on there? <laughs> Ooh, Lord. The renewing. I'm not an English teacher, but I believe that's a verb. And that verb means that it, it's constant. So it's the renewing uh -huh, of your mind. Of your mind. See, so what happens is sometimes the devil likes to slip something in your air or put something there to make you go back. But you got to keep your mind renew the bible says that the inner man is renewed day by somebody read their bible this morning so when i come to this apostolic truth i gotta make some changes i gotta make some adjustments and i gotta know that there's only one way yes sir. and can i tell you something we all have to speak the same thing if we're preaching the same thing that our pastor is preaching, you as the congregation, when you out there talking to your friends, you should be saying the same thing. There should be no divisions. And see, the problem is now, I'm going to tell you why there's so many churches. I'm going to tell you why there's so many different faith systems. Simply because that one way was too strong. Let me tell you something. Watch this. If you ever get you, go down there to a cup of, need, cup of eating, and you get you a cup of coffee. If it tastes too strong, you add to it to dilute it. God, I just need, Lord. They're going to catch it in just a second, Brother Randy. If I add several doctrines, if I add several belief systems, what it does is it dilutes the all powerful one and mighty God. Oh, Jesus, I wish I had the right church. So what happened was they added so many different doctrinal beliefs 
to dilute the one apostolic doctrine that was mentioned in the Bible. There's no other doctrine besides the apostolic doctrine. Ain't no Protestant doctrine, ain't no Catholic doctrine, ain't no Baptist doctrine, ain't no Presbyterian doctrine, ain't no non-denominational doctrine. There's only one doctrine. And the good thing is, is that the Bible talked about how the people were astonished at Jesus' doctrine. I'm going to give you two scriptures and I got to go. All right, go down to Luke chapter number one, I believe. I got to get out of here. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm sorry, Mark chapter one. Let me give you this. Thank you, Jesus. Look at somebody that says only one way. And only one doctrine. All right. Read uh, uh, 1 and 21. What does that say? Of Mark. And they went into Capernaum. And straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority. And not as described. So the Bible says that, and there's several other scriptures that talks about the doctrine. It was astonished at Jesus' doctrine. You say, well, why, how, what doctrine was he talking about? Then the Bible was talking about the doctrine is not of his, of his father. But then you go down to Hebrews chapter 3. Watch this, chapter 3 and 1. So we got to find out what doctrine was Jesus teaching during that time. Is it the same doctrine that we have now, or is this something different? It's the same thing. All right, what does that say? Wherefore, holy brethren... Hebrews chapter 3 and 1, wherefore, holy brethren? Partakers of the heavenly calling. Uh-huh. Consider the apostle. Consider the what? Apostle. Apostle. And high priest uh -huh. of our profession. Our profession? Christ Jesus. So the Bible says that Jesus, in fact, was an apostle. So if Jesus was an apostle and he was preaching doctrine, then that doctrine had to be the apostle's doctrine. So this, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I thought y'all was going to get happy that you're in the truth. So then you go over there to uh, Acts chapter 2 and 42. I'm, I'm hurrying up because I got to go. The Bible says this. What does that say, son? 2 and 42. 2 and 42. What does that say? And they steadfast. And they were steadfast. In the apostles' doctrine. Now, how could they be steadfast in something that they wasn't taught? How could they be steadfast in something that they didn't learn? Of course, they learned that Jesus preached and taught to them the doctrine that we have today. So there's no need for you trying to look for no other church. There's no need for you to try to look through this scripture to try to disprove anything that we believe because everything we believe is in the Bible. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Because you got people that's in the church that's trying to disprove something that they just don't believe. In some parts of the Bible... Lord, I'm about to get in trouble here. Some parts of you know, some of the stuff, you know, some stuff apostles say, I just, I just can't get with. I, I believe this, but I believe that. But there's, you know, just certain things that he say, I just can't get with. I mean, it, it, this, our books compiled into one. Whatever we minister from, it's coming out of the same book. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Come on, sir. Look at somebody say, I'm not with the hybrid. Apostolic is who I am. I'm going to give you two more and I'm letting you go. Watch this. Go down there. Hallelujah. The first Corinthians chapter one. And when we are believers of this, we got to be believers of the whole thing. Yes, sir. Don't try to pick and choose. This, this, you know, this ain't the pick and choose place. Amen. All right. Where I got you at? First Corinthians 1. And 10, what does that say? Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. We have to speak the exact same thing. I ain't saying nothing. Can't be in a church and say, well, I, you, know, I, you know, I heard what Paul said, but this, this part I just can't, you know. I, we got to believe the same thing. Amen. And if you don't have an understanding of what he's saying, get some clarity. Amen. Don't go running your mouth about it. Go to the source. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer that if there's something that you don't understand that I said, come to me so I can explain it. Don't go down there to brother such and such and say, you know, I don't, 
Did you, did you understand that? I ain't really get it. Did you? If you didn't get it, and some of y'all like to listen to it. What, 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 what part? What part you was talking about? What, 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 what part? You know that gossiping spirit to get a hold of you. you just, what part you ain't get? Because I might not have got that. I probably didn't get none of it either. So you need to go directly to the source. There's something that you don't understand. Amen. Remember when Jesus was teaching them, uh, when he's talking about marriage and divorce, the disciples, he taught them privately. They asked privately, they asked questions. Go back to the source. If you can't get it, if it's something that I'm saying that you don't understand, if it's something that the pastors understand that you don't understand, something that the bishop, the apostle, go to the source. Amen. Amen. We're not opposed to questions. One thing, I one thing I love about this church is that apostle has poured so much into us. I'm, so, I'm glad that I got this truth. Listen, out there in Statesboro, there are so many young people, and young people not just going to just listen to what you're saying. They're going to ask some questions. And I'm so grateful that we got truth. So even when the questions present themselves, I got an answer. Because my father taught me. I'm not saying I got every, every answer that, but listen, if I don't have it, I'm going to get it because yes, I know where to go. Yes, you know what? I got, I got the answer key. Y'all ain't saying that. Yes, but you got the test question. You know you got somebody got the, they got the answer key. My leader, he got the answer key. Yes. Somebody shout hallelujah. You know, the Bible don't talk about just a key that was given. It said keys, but oh, we're going to move forward. All right. Now, last scripture, second uh, John chapter one, and I'm closing. And the Bible also tells us, amen, to mark them. We got we to gotta mark them. That matter of fact, go there. And I, I promise my, my Bible closed. Go down to the Romans chapter 16. 17. Let me say this. And then I'm going to leave, I promise. All right, what does that say? 16, 17. It says mark them. Uh-huh. Now I beseech you, brethren, uh -huh. mark them which uh -huh. causes division. Now, he said, if there's anybody that's causing division, now if you're not going to be a hybrid, you got to start marking folks. They, you, you so caught up on TBN and CB, all those different ends where the, the word network and all them people, if they start talking about Trinity or anything, you got to mark them and say, oh, I, I can't listen to that person. They start talking about Ecclesiasticus, that's in the, <laughs> that's in the lost books, you say, I got, I got Mark this fella, he talking about something, that, that's contrary to what we've learned. Y'all ain't saying nothing. They start talking about all these different theories and talking about the, you know, I'm going to pray to this and I'm going to pray to that and you don't use Jesus' name, you got to mark them, say, hold on now. And they start talking to something that, that, that and, and see, the church has gotten away from that. Ain't nothing wrong with marking them and then avoid them. Read, uh-huh, son. Now, I beseech you, brethren, uh -huh. mark them, mark with, them. which uh -huh. cause divisions uh -huh. and offenses. And offense. You know, some people can say something that is offensive to the doctrine. Wow, that's good. That's good. Wow. When you hear people start teaching stuff that's outside of the confines of the Bible and outside of what we learn, it's wow. offensive. Uh-huh, read. Contrary to the doctrine uh -huh. which we have learned. Which we've learned. If you learn it, that's the doctrine you learn. Somebody start teaching contrary to it. You say, hold on now. I got to mark that person. And then the read, uh-huh. And avoid them. And avoid them. So when it come up on your TV, turn it off. Some of y'all just go on YouTube looking it up anyway. <laughs> it got real quiet. I done bust a couple of bubbles. Try to get a deep. I'm going to get a deep. This person, he, he seemed like he teach a little bit more on the historical side. So I want to, I want to watch this person. I want to watch Jamal Bryant because he just seemed like he got a different, a different connection. Ain't pastor a Baptist church? We ain't Baptist, so why are you listening? It's offensive. He said, avoid him. Uh huh. Read, son. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. For they that are such don't serve the God that we serve. So if there are messages contrary to what we believe in, he said, hold on now, don't listen to it, avoid it. Because they don't serve our Lord. Amen. Everyone stand and give the Lord a hand. Praise.
Remember, we ain't with the hybrid stuff. Look at somebody say, we ain't with the hybrid. We with the one way. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. Clap your hands and give the Lord a praise. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand praise again. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Amen. We certainly thank God for that word that was given to us on today. Amen. How many are still apostolic? Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to collect our offering before we leave. If I can get the brothers to uh, bring our offering, our two offering baskets, we're going to take.